down. Matchup of two top 20 guys. Peterson back into the top 10 this week after his victory on Monday over Penn State's Aaron Nagao. That was in sudden victory. Tough loss for Rutgers overall at, at the Nittany Lions. But Shawver was the bright spot on the road at the Bryce Jordan Center. Then you got Braxton Brown here on the other side. He's had an excellent 2023-24 campaign. Seven tech falls, five and two in Big Ten bouts. You get a stalemate here. Almost 40 seconds into the first period. A reset in the center. So Peterson made quick work. And 125 pounds for the early 5 nothing lead for the Scarlet Knights. And now, Shawver looking for yet another ranked win. And in his first year at 133 pounds after spending the last few at 125 pounds, including getting to NCAAs back in 2022. He's looking like a true All-American contender at this weight in 24. Shawver's going to clear those ties now. Almost halfway through the first period, no score yet, no shots from either man yet. There's a shot from Shawver, high crotch. Brown trying to defend, holding that ankle. Shawver trying to hip in now. He's deep on that leg. See Brown trying to scramble, trying to elevate now. Peterson still working that outstretched leg. Now coming up, nearly into that treetop position, trying to come out the back now. Peterson trying to get his leg back. He does. Brown hanging on tight to that waist and that ankle. Peterson trying to turn back in and face him. Nothing yet. No back exposure is, so no danger calls here. Just a minute to go first period. Now, Pier now you see Shawver turning back in. His legs caught, trying to get Brown stuck. Turns back in, still nothing yet. Now Brown, an opportunity. Shawver dumps him with the leg. A very tight scramble between these two. What a crazy last few seconds. Shawver looking for that treetop. Brown with great defense to recover from that from a very precarious position. And Shawver so close to getting the takedown, but unable to do so. We'll reset in the center after the stalemate. 30 seconds to go in this first period. Still scoreless. 30 seconds. Shawver the lone shot right now. Braxton Brown, a qualifier for NCAAs last year. Another shot from Shawver, and Brown able to get that knee away. And then a re-attack from Shawver, driving on a double. Brown cartwheels. Now Shawver behind him, rolling through. What a scramble by these two. There's a takedown for Shawver right at the buzzer of the first period. He's up 3-0. Had to sweat a little there as the time was running out, but Shawver goes for like three separate attacks in the last 15 seconds of the frame and ultimately gets the takedown. Watch this, cartwheel rolled through by Brown, just barely stays in bounds as well, and able to finish him off right as that buzzer sounds. These two are gonna start neutral in this second period. Brown nearly had that full cartwheel, so he ended up with a Granby roll there. Shawver just amazingly was able to follow him. Mean, you see the athleticism of both these guys. Shawver in particular, who's just Looks like a new wrestler at this weight this year, much improved as he, he's been improving year to year. Shot from Brown, good defense there from Shawver to thumb post away. Now go back to post on the head, trying to get this pressure forward once again. Brown trying to push forward right now towards the boundary, working that two-on-one, a shot here. He's got Shawver's leg and out of bounds, they go. So Shawver able to defend. Referee calling for more action, so no fleeing or stalling from Shawver there. But Brown definitely the aggressor in this second period. Yeah, Brown was really working for it. You could tell Shawver was trying to get away. Brown couldn't keep the one point of contact in bounds, and I'll see where we go from here. Way through the second. Shawver keeping this in the center. Quick feint there as well. 
See Brown trying to snap down as well. 45 seconds. Back to those collar ties, head-to-head -head ties, and Shaw were able to kick his leg out of the way after that shot attempt from Brown. Stay center, though. Saw plenty of re-attacks from Shawver in that first period to get that lone takedown of the match. That's the difference right now. Brown has had his opportunities. Hasn't been able to get deep in on a leg yet, though. A couple feints from Brown. Shot here. He's got Shawver's foot. He'll scramble now. Brown trying to re-attack Shawver, grabbing the ankle short time here, trying to dump Brown. Getting that cross face there, trying to get him to his back here. Nothing yet. Shawver readjusting. Nothing here. And now Brown reattacks. Time runs out. No takedown in the second period. Here comes a challenge brick from Alex Clemson in the Maryland bench. My goodness, that changed fast in those last 10 seconds. Looked like Shawver had a chance for a second straight buzzer beating takedown. But Brown rolls through, sets himself up. And Clemson challenges, and you watch this here, definitely has a case, I think. We're going to see, I know Rutgers wanted some sort of takedown here when he had Brown on his back. So you see Shawver go cross face here. Doesn't look like he has full control here. That's where Rutgers wanted a takedown. But then Brown able to roll through. Now it's tough to tell if he has full control here. And then time runs out, it looks like, based on that side judge right there, Eddie, before Brown able to roll back through. Yeah, it was really close, but it looked like if Brown maybe had one more second there, we'd be even 3-3, but really tough one for the officials to look at. And just a really weird bout so far, Nick. I mean, it's been a lot of, of feeling out process at the beginning of these periods, and then it's just gone to another level in the last few seconds of both periods. Well, they're going to keep looking at this, and reviews have been the name of the game over the last couple of weeks. You know, what, basically, it's like, what is a catch? What is a takedown this year with the slightly new rules? So they just confirmed it on the mat. No takedown there for Brown. So the challenge is unsuccessful for Maryland. And now we'll go to the third pair. These two are going to be on their feet once again. So both guys have chosen neutral. Don't want to waste their time on top and bottom. And Shawver still holds a 3-0 lead. Riding time, not a factor. You want to know how much is not a factor? It's only at .3 seconds. <laughs> Shot here from Shawver and that double leg. Driving through, and he's got it. Another takedown. Dylan Shawver at the 6-0 lead. Shawver there, the aggression, but Brown trying to storm back. Quick escape for Brown. Got back in on a shot. Good defense from Shawver. Posting, circling back in the center, re-attacks and Shawver. That's good re-attacks right there because Brown was really pushing the pace. It is six to one. And 128 to go in this match. I think Shawver needs injury time, possibly blood. We'll see. Can't tell if he's bleeding or maybe he lost a contact here. Looks like blood time to me. Yeah, based right on the cleanup by the nose. Here's a look at this again from Shawver driving through, powering, turning around Brown, and a perfectly executed takedown right there. That's what you're looking for, and gives himself some breathing room right here, heading to the final 128. Yeah, breathing room is right, Eddie, as you mentioned. Only a 3 0 lead, and now that second takedown. And again, the three point takedown, Brown can get back into it in a hurry, but it gives you a little bit of a cushion right here. The way he's been attacking, Shawver's not going to step off the gas pedal. Braxton Brown for Maryland, 39 and 14 in his career, 15 and 6 this season. As I mentioned, NCAA qualifier last season, looking like he's going to be going back to Nationals, this time in Kansas City, just a month from now. And this is big for seeding, though, for both these guys for the Big Ten tournament next month. Little faint there from Brown, and he's able to get Shawver off balance, but he gets his wits back with him. A little over a minute to go in the third period. Shot again from Shawver. High cross, trying to switch to a double. He's chasing. He's still driving. Shawver on top. Brown trying to scramble, holding a foot. And there's three. Dylan Shawver, another takedown. Now looking for a tilt. He's trying to frame the head here. Brown trying to belly back down. He does. It's 9-1. to one. Shawver keeping that left boot in. Brown trying to shake him off. Back to their feet they go, and he'll cut him loose. It's 9-2 to two now. 
One more takedown, and they were looking at bonus points here for Dylan Shaver. And he's been aggressive at the end of these periods twice. Let's see what he can do here as we hit 30 seconds. Might, might be a little too before. He's not going to get off the gas pedal. But a good shot by Brown in on a double around the back now. Trying to get Shaver down. Granby roll through. And there's a takedown for Braxton Brown. He cuts the lead 9-5. to five. 16 seconds. So Brown's going to need a quick turn here. He's going to try to throw double boots in. Shaver. No riding time here. Short time, Shaver. Gonna try to base out here, and he's gonna hang on for the victory. Another ranked win for Dylan Shaver, this time in 9-5 over Braxton Brown, and Rutgers has an 8-0 lead after two bouts. Column Dagger, Dylan had that big play right at the end of the opening period, does just enough. Brown tries to rally late, but Shaver, an excellent showing, keeps the hot streak going. And at the 197, it's Jackson Smith for Maryland. Hayden Packer getting the call, the true freshman for the Scarlet Knights. This is his official dual debut, Eddie. He did wrestle in Jersey Mike's earlier this season in an exhibition bout. But he's got a beast on his hands right now with the fourth-ranked guy in the country in Jackson Smith. Yeah, and hasn't wrestled since January 28th, a couple of bouts at the Matt Town Open. So, again, a real challenge here, and this is an opportunity for Maryland to kind of right the ship a little bit. Hayden Packer, the freshman for the Scarlet Knights, just 7-9 and nine this year. He's currently in red shirt. And obviously, with John Posnanski at this weight, he'll get this year to develop. And with Paz not in the lineup this evening, Packer gets a big opportunity to wrestle one of the best guys in the country. And Jackson Smith's been a beast this year, 13-3. and three. Again, fourth at this weight. Got to the blood round last year at 197, and he's going to immediately try to go around here, spin around. He was cradle hunting, but he is in on this takedown. He's up 3 nothing. And was third in Big Tens last year at 197. And looking for more this year, just the one loss in conference competition. Looking for a big mat return here, able to get Packer back down, and Packer did a good job rolling back to his belly and keeping himself in his base. Halfway through the first period, Smith on top. Packer trying to stand up, and Smith able to follow him here as Packer tries to run and get out of bounds. He does get out of bounds here. He's looking for the escape point there. Smith able to follow him. No change here, it's three, still 3 nothing. And Smith already almost at a minute of riding time, 43 seconds. The only losses for Smith this year, you have to go back to November 11th. He lost to Stephen Little of Little Rock, the Arkansas school. That was a 7-3 decision. And again, Eddie, the only other two guys he's lost to are the top two guys in the country. He lost to Trent Hidley of NC State, 5-2 at the Cliff Keen Invitational. And again, didn't lose again until... January 28th, when he wrestled Aaron Brooks, the three-time national champion for Penn State. That was a 13-4 major decision loss. It just goes to show you the level that Brooks is at compared to the rest of the country. Yeah, when you look at Smith as best of the rest, potentially, and Brooks still able to walk away with the major decision. He's dominant on top right now, Smith is. Well over a minute of riding time here in this first period. Packer was part of a Stout recruiting class in 2023 for the Scarlet Knights. Started off his Rutgers career pretty well, too. Went 4-1 and one at the Princeton Open back in November. Smith doing a good job on top right now, trying to frame the head. Packer from Jersey Shore High School out in Pennsylvania. Of course, that sounds weird to Jersey natives who had never heard of that high school. First period comes to a close. 3-0 Jackson Smith on top. Nearly two minutes of riding time. He'll defer. It'll be Packer's choice. Packer had a pretty well-known high school football career as well. He was a running back at Jersey Shore High School. One of the best in the area. Nick, I'll tell you, when I was driving to Penn State with a friend back in November, and I saw a sign for Jersey Shore while I'm driving through the mountains of Pennsylvania, I thought we took a wrong turn somewhere. <laughs> I don't know what was going on. 
thought they were headed down to LBI or something. Well, Packer is out for one. He cuts the lead three to one. In on a shot here. Packer on the single leg. Then you see the defense from Smith. Just so tough. Framing the head and re-attacking on that ankle. So Wizards in. Packer has to let loose. Now Smith re-attacking for a big trip. He's got to take down Jackson Smith. And there you go. Unfortunately for Packer, there are levels to this as Smith able to defend off a deep shot there and gets a 6-1 lead. Yeah, those first four minutes and change, just the one takedown. It built up the riding time, but was waiting for the explosive moment. And the number four wrestler at this weight comes through with an emphatic takedown. Packer did get out for one there on the boundary. He's down by four, about halfway through this second period. Another shot from Smith and driving through another takedown. He's up nine to two, and now Smith Senses it. He's going to start trying to pour it on here. It's 9-3 after letting him up. Back in again. That's just stepping through. Another takedown. Too good. Too quick. You know, Packer's one of the toughest dudes in the room, especially for a freshman, the way he's built. But Jackson Smith all over him right now. Can't finish this one yet. He's got the single leg shelled on the boundary. Packer trying to defend. And Smith collects the second leg. He's got another takedown and out of bounds. Not yet, and now they're out. 15-4, Smith on top. After the escape here, 15-5, late second period. Ideally, Packer would love to save bonus points here. Obviously, Rutgers in control, and they have wrapped up the dual meet here. Another Smith takedown here. He just re-attacks off of Packer, getting him out of position, basically just stepping through, locking around that body, 18-5. to five. Short time, second period. Closing in on tech fall territory as well. Second period comes to a close. Smith on top by 13 here. It's Packers' choice. I actually, I beg your pardon. They are going to check him for blood here and clean him up. 245, Ryan Tepper Smith, who's dominant. So again, Rutgers in control here, 27 to 4, as we're nearing the end of 197. And of course, heavyweight on tap. Yaroslav Slavikuski coming up for the Scarlet Knights, and we'll see either Seth Nevels or Sam O'Brien for Maryland. Maryland's going to finish off their season with two more, two, one more duel, I should say. They're going to host Drexel next Friday at 7 o'clock before the Terps host this year's Big Ten Championships. And I believe it's actually their first time hosting the tournament. It was Rutgers' first opportunity back in 2020. A standout event here inside Jersey Mike's. Smith on bottom here for the third period. Stands right up. Packer looking to stay on top. You're looking for a mat return. Smith's hips are just heavy and towards the mat. Cuts out for one, 19-5. So running time is just about locked for Smith, but one more takedown will ensure a tech falls. And you see Packer attack on a shot, and Smith reattacks. He gets the takedown. He'll win this one via tech fall, 22-5. A clinic put on by Jackson Smith. Maryland cuts the lead. 27-9 with one bout to go. Yeah, the Jackson Smith experience, full display right there. Smith, the anchor of this Terrapins program, does quick work. From Harvard to finish out this evening's duel. And a win here for Slava Kuski, and Rutgers can put up and get a 30 spot on Maryland. Would be one of the highest scoring duels this year for the Scarlet Knights. And the heavyweight spot for Maryland, there's been a lot of movement there. Nevels, this is going to be his third time. He's 1-1 one one so far in conference play. Sam O'Brien, Jordan Gabriel also have competed at the heavy ranks. And Nevels, someone transferred from Penn State to come back home, native of Maryland. Nevels has a long family lineage with his brothers in wrestling. And a ranked matchup here. As you mentioned, Eddie spent the last four years at Penn State before transferring. He did start as a freshman back in 2020 for the Nittany Lions. Seems sporting that shoulder brace on the left side. 
A lot of head-to-head -head tie-offs with Slava Kuski. Neville's ranked 26 in the country for the Terps. If you remember, Nick Neville's from Penn State, a two-time All-American for the Nitty Lions. That's one of his older brothers. His oldest brother, Zach, was a Pac-12 champion for Stanford back in 2017 at 184 pounds. And Seth's other older brother, AJ, he wrestled for Fresno State and South Dakota State. He was a four-time NCAA qualifier. So a lot going on in that Neville's house. I can't imagine what that household was like growing up. <laughs> imagine them playing, like, floor hockey or something in the basement back in the day and it would turn into a brawl. Absolutely could. I can only imagine the backyard matches those, those four guys had, especially with three of these guys developing into college heavyweights. Well, Slava Kuski ranked 10th in the country for Rutgers, 14-3 this year during his graduate senior year. He spent four years at Harvard, two-time NCAA qualifier, was credited as a coach's All-American second team back in 2020 due to the canceled tournament. Slava Kusi leading it back on the winning end of things. He had a tough loss on Monday against Penn State. Also lost to Ohio State's Nick Feldman last time he was at home. Slava Kusi looking to officially get on the podium for an All-American finish here in Kansas City in a month from now. Got to the blood round last year for the Harvard Crimson. But he's been a welcome sight at this weight for Rutgers when they needed a hammer like him. Not much doing here in this first period. A lot of tie-ups from both guys, some reaching in on some shots. And with short time right now, Slava Kuski trying to push forward. First period comes to a close. It is scoreless. A good battle so far between these two. Slava Kuski, an opportunity with a win would give Rutgers their largest margin of victory in a Big Ten bout this season. Slava Kuski able to cut away for one. So he's up one nothing off the escape in the first 10 seconds. Only took a little over three seconds. Neville's reaching on a shot. Good sprawl from Slava Kuski. We're now working the front head. Seconds gone in this second period. Neville's a bit of a feint there, half shot. At least trying to threaten one. And Slava Kuski keeps working. He's collar ties. A lot of action on the tie ups, at least. How many shots really attempted here? Slava Kuski is being the aggressor right now, though, pushing forward. Gonna snap him down here as well. Minute to go in the second. Neville's now trying to push forward. Another half shot there from Slava Kusi trying to reach in, trying to snag a single. Same goes for Neville's. Rutgers has won seven of nine bouts this evening. Maryland won at 149 and 197. The Terps do get a ranked win at 149 with Ethan Miller over Michael Chetta. And Jackson Smith gets the and got the tech fall over Rutgers freshman Hayden Packer. Now Slava Kuski almost able to reach out on that single leg on Neville's left leg. But still nothing doing. Short time in this second period. And with a 1-0 lead, Slava Kuski will head into the third period. Still winning this one. Neville's going to choose down here, and we could very well see this match end on the feet. Unless Slava Kuski can get a big ride here. Regardless of how this one wraps up, good Get right dual meet for the Scarlet Knights, especially with the Big Ten tournament looming after four consecutive losses to four powerhouses. 
And Slava Kuski driving back in. Neville's able to scramble through. He's up on top. And they're going to call that a takedown. Out of bounds they go. So Slava Kuski went in on the shot. It appeared he was going to be able to finish that takedown. Neville's able to get his hips back. Ended up on top. And Coach Goodell was contemplating again that challenge brick for full control here. But Neville's the takedown and a 4-1 lead. And he's going to get hit for the caution here. It's a great response from Neville. Slava Kuski comes in with the attack, but Neville's unfazed, stays level, and then takes advantage of Slava Kuski kind of exposing himself and is able to secure that takedown and take this lead. Slava Kuski trying to cut at the hands here. He's got 90 seconds to go. Rodding time out of factory. He's down by three. Neville's trying to get a mat return here. And there's a stall warning on Neville's that he's going to ride Slava Kuski out of bounds. Coach Goodell is shouting instructions to Slava Kuski. And he's down by three. He had the takedown there, Eddie, but Neville's great defense here. Head coach Alex Clemson from Maryland was trying to conversate with the official, I would assume, on that stall warning. Then you saw assistant coach Joe Pollard come out from the Rutgers bench and say, let's go, let's wrestle. Yara was ready. Nevels was kind of standing there waiting for the official. Slava Kuski trying to get his foot free here, trying to fire in a wizard with that right arm. Nevels has already been hit for stalling once. Slava Kuski out for one. It's four to two. The shot is there for Slava Kuski, but he has less than a minute to go. Can Yara get a clutch takedown here and end Rutgers with a victory here at heavyweight? Nevels looking for the upset. Reaching shot there from Nevels. Slava Kuski re-attacking, now working, underhook. Out the overhook on the other side, trying to spin around to the back. 35 seconds, still trying to step into him. Slava Kuski going for the lat drop, lost his balance. Now Nevels on top, Slava Kuski re-attacking. Nevels. Cranking at the ankle, 23 seconds, nothing yet. Still near the boundary. Yara, trying to finish this one off and get a takedown for the lead. Nevels coming through, he's got Slava Kuski flattened. 10 seconds. Nothing here, Slava Kuski is stuck here and Seth Nevels is gonna get the upset here, four to two. So he'll end the duel with a, on a positive note for Maryland. Yaroslav Slava Kuski falls short to end it on a positive note for the Scarlet Knights. But in the end, Eddie, Rutgers wins this one 27-12. Yeah, a win's a win for the Scarlet Knights. For the Terps, good way to end it with their two final heavy bouts. But for Rutgers, get back in the win column. Seven victories in ten bouts. Dean Peterson put on a show with the